I think it's all just trusting yourself. Prepare, practice, and then trust yourself. But don't try and reinvent the wheel and, and back your instinct. Hey legends, it's 5.20. 4 a.m., I've just finished a 10 minute workout. Just one minute skip, one minute push up, which I couldn't do. Uh, one minute of kettlebell swings, one minute of crunches and one minute plank, twice round. Uh, went to bed last night, or well, yesterday afternoon, sort of, I decided I wanted to be better, I wanted more in my life. Um, obviously, I've got a beautiful life, I'm very grateful for everything I've got, but I want to be a better version of myself, and to do that I have to take action, I have to make changes. I have to better myself every single day and it starts with what I do in the morning. It starts with how I go to bed at night so that I can get up in the morning and be better. So I'm gonna try my best to get up at five every morning, um, spend the first hour doing, going through my morning routine, exercise. While I was doing the exercise, I had a motivational video going, reinforcing some positive thoughts and positive affirmations. Just something on YouTube, really, really nice video. Um, I'm now gonna meditate dry off my face a bit, meditate for 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna do some journaling and some planning for the day, set myself some intentions, some goals, review my calendar, make sure I'm set for the day. Then from six till seven, I'm gonna not be on my phone, I'm gonna learn something, I'm gonna spend that hour learning. Now I've got so many things I wanna do with the business, so many things I need to learn and improve myself and really spend that hour. So I'm working on myself for the first two hours, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then I'll probably get my daughter up, if she's awake by then. And then, yeah, start working a bit after that. So first two hours of my day are gonna be sacred. Monday the 4th of May, I wanna really commit to this. Hopefully I can carry this on for a while yet and challenge you guys, what can you do? You might not be getting up at 5 a.m. It might not be doing what I'm doing, but what can you do to make yourself a better version of you? What can you do to live your best life? I'm on a mission of trying to live my best life and also inspire others as well through my content. So, I'm sweating. Um, it's been a great start to the morning. 10 minutes of work. It took me a little while. Got up, had a sh um, wash my face, brush my teeth. Got some, my sort of stuff ready. Got the um, computer out. Video on, so it took a little while. So it's a bit later than I'd planned, but 5.30 nearly, get my meditation done and then crack on with the rest of the day. But yeah, awesome, awesome start. And I'm gonna keep sort of trying to do this every morning and keep you updated. Super, super important, especially when like you're big on getting volume in, um, is taking is taking time in between each ball. Even though you're only in the backyard, I'd I'd hate for you to just think, hey, well, 45 minutes, I'm gonna hit a ball every seven seconds. And then that ends up meaning you do 45 minutes at 50% quality instead of hitting 25 less balls, but hitting them at 80, 90, 100 percent quality. Yeah. So, so, and I know that you've got a confined space, so it's only six meters or whatever. Like, so just really take time getting your setup and your process right. And if it means you hit one ball every thirty seconds, that's okay because that's actually more like game like. And something that I'm come coming to really try and understand is that cricket is so different. We train our environment at training is so different to a game. So how can we as, as individuals, how can, and how can I as a coach find ways to try and get the athletes that I work with to actually train more like it's a game? So you've got to have sessions where you just get volume in. And that's like underarms, that's bowling machine, whatever. You're getting volume in. But you've also got to have sessions where you're practicing like a game. And that means you've got, you've got 20 seconds in between balls. You've got to have time to relax, switch off, and then practice focusing again. So 
make sure you, you maybe you're having two types of sessions where you're getting volume in and others where you're relaxing. But the, in the environment you're in with no games coming up in the near future and whatever, I'd say just do a little mixture where you're actually getting volume in. You're not having 20 seconds in between balls. You might just have seven in, mm. instead of having three. So you're actually, you sort of like, you set yourself up you, you sort of see it, you play your shot, and then you take a second or two to reflect and learn. You take a second to take a deep breath and refocus and recenter yourself. And then you take a couple of seconds to get your set up and your stance right. Think about your internal cues, your internal trigger. And then you sort of like watch the ball. And then you go and hit the next ball. And that whole process might take seven to 10 seconds. But most kids will train. Most guys your age will go hit not even an acknowledge that shot, often they'll beat themselves up if it's a bad one. If it's a good one, they'll be like, oh, well, whatever, that's what I should do, move on quickly. They don't learn from it, so they're not reflecting. And then they rush into the next shot without just relaxing and refocusing. And then they're more likely to make a mistake the next ball because they haven't reset themselves. Yeah. Does that that's make sense? So. Fun. Yeah. So you're obviously getting quantity in. Sorry, I keep talking. I'll let you talk now. But no, you're obviously getting quantity in, but just make sure it's quality as well. No. So your body analysis and your body, your focus on your body happens pre-ball and post-ball. So before the ball's bowled and then after the ball's bowled, you reflect and think, okay, that didn't go where I wanted to. And I think it was because my head was back. And because my head was back, I reached for it. So next we'll have to get my head forward. So you're thinking about internal, thinking about your body and your head and all your body parts. But as the ball's about to be bowled, you're really wanting to just be reacting and letting your subconscious do what it needs to do. Yeah. And then, so pre-ball, you might be going through an internal routine. Okay, come on, checklist, like a checklist. Okay, feet, shoulder, head, hands. Okay, watch the ball. Watch the, and you go through an internal checklist, then you move to an external focus. Does that make sense? It's quite confusing and it's, I'm only really, really, and I've always known about physical versus mental routines and I've been coaching that for a long time and really having a mental routine, but I, I'm really starting to understand that the, the difference between internal cues and the, like focusing on your body parts and just external, like, okay, where do you want to hit this ball? Wherever the fielder isn't. So that's like an external, okay? There's no field that I want to hit the ball there. No field that I want to hit yeah. the ball there. Rather than, okay, I want to, okay, the ball's on middle leg. I want to hit the ball through mid wicket because there's no fielder. Rather than like, okay, the ball's on middle leg. I've got to get my shoulder there. I've got to get my elbow there. And you start going internal and that's when you're likely to make more mistakes. And guys, we put out a lot of content. There's so much content on our Instagram, our YouTube, our podcast. We're sharing stories from some of the, the game's great cricketers. And it, it's not so much for our enjoyment, although we do enjoy what we do. It's to help serious cricketers. It's to help aspiring cricketers understand what it takes to be the best. And a lot of people say they want to be the best. A lot of people sort of pretend that they want to be the best. But it's the ones that take action. It's the ones that put in the work. It's the ones that show up day after day and want to just get better. And the ones that are happy to try and find ways to get one percent better it might not be a magical huge change it's just little things one percent here one percent there it might mean you invest an hour of your time into listening to a podcast and you get one thing out of it and that could be the thing that changes your career and changes your life so well done to this young man i've got no doubt he's going to go a long way in this game because he's investing in himself he's wanting to learn he's wanting to be better hey legends it is 10 to 12 on wednesday the 6th of may sitting here in the bed working from here this morning got my laptop um been up since five, did my morning routine, did some reading for the Changing the Game Project um, coach mentorship program that I'm going through. So read from, sort of did my hour of sort of self-development, my morning routine, five to six. Six to seven, did some reading. Seven till 8.30 was the uh, live cl class with coaches from all over the world. So that was good. Learned a few things there. Um, that was mostly about, it's really about culture and values. And it's something that I've really been spending a lot of time on with what we're doing at Cricket Mentoring, and we're doing, um, we've done some really I interesting things around that. So I'm going to be sharing that with our um, customers and our clients and our community very soon. So looking forward to bringing you more on that um, in the future. And then had a little bit of time with the family, had some breakfast, had a coffee. Um, favorite part of my morning, having my coffee and my toasty. Uh, absolutely love it. And then 
worked um, from the office for an hour and then Mrs. S was sharing the office. She had to get on a call. So I came in here and I've been working from here. I had a few phone calls to make, um, catch up with a few people, um, all relating to the business. So I got them done. I've been sending out some emails and doing a few other bits and pieces. So really productive morning. I'm loving this morning routine, getting up. It's nearly, it's nearly midday. I've been up for seven hours, got a lot done so far. We're not even halfway through the day. Uh, just about to jump on a team meeting on Zoom with Reedy and Spurry and chat through various things, um, what they're working on. Uh, had a good chat to Buck this morning. Got some exciting news coming out about him very soon. We'll be announcing something around that very soon. So I can't give you any more info, but really, really excited what, what's happening over with, with Bucky Rogers, former Australian uh, batsman and my great mate. Um, and lots of great things happening, legends. Exciting times ahead. You could, okay, let's say one thing about us is our time is limited. Yeah. So, so let's say you train three times a week between now and the season and you train for an hour and a half each time. So three times an hour and a half times 20 weeks, that's a limited amount of time. So if you mm -hmm. try and fix five things, you're going to have less time on each. So you're not going to be as good at each. Yeah. So I go through this exercise with my athletes to try and get them to think about all the things, but then narrow what's really important. Yeah. So I want you to look at that list and put the rank them one, two, and three, and then four okay. and five is irrelevant. So, but yeah. what's the most important thing? What's the second most important thing? What's the third most important thing? So, so basically what I do with my athletes is we say, right, here's our, here's what we're working on. You've just yeah. told me what you need to work on, what you want to work on. Yeah. So, so basically now it's about breaking your sessions down to say, how can I achieve that goal? Yeah. So your goal is to pull fast bowling. I would say, right. You need to be spending a fair chunk of your time getting your pull shot technique right at the yeah. start. You build the blo you build the blocks, and that might be. And I'll just say like get your your dad, your stepdad, or your your training partner, whoever, yeah. on their knee, seven or eight meters from you, and underarming the ball between so on the full, so it's between your chest and your head, and yeah. you're just practicing. You've taken away all the decisions. You know it's going to be a pull shot, so you're just practicing getting in a good position and nailing it. You don't even. Like, and I want you to focus on just, okay, this is where it can get a bit complicated. I want you to have internal understanding of what you're doing. Yeah. So what I mean by that is I want you to sort of think, okay, if I get my hips through quickly, I can then get my hands through and I can hit the ball well. And you know that your hips are important to you yeah. hitting the ball well. Or you think, okay, head still, my head has to be still. If I turn my head too early, I'm not going to hit the ball. So you're thinking mm. about these body movements and that's what we call an internal focus yeah but like that happens pre-ball and in your reflection but when you're about when the ball's about to be let go and you're about to hit it it's got to be an external focus yeah it's so like okay i'm going to try and hit this ball and you might have you might sort of have an imaginary field say right okay to practice the pull shot i'm just going to practice hitting the ball really firmly along the ground and you're visualizing it going for four and you're just smacking it into different parts of the ground. Like you're just getting in different positions and you're hitting different, you might pull five in front of point in front of square. You might pull five behind square. You might pull five over mid on five over yep. mid wicket and you're just playing and you're just hitting the ball in different areas. And then mm. your, your, your reflection and your pre ball checklist are like internal things. Yeah. But when you're hitting, you're just hitting with and like a hit the ball, hit the ball. You're not thinking head, hand, shoulder, shoulder, and like too many internal things. Mm. Does that make sense or am I confusing you? Yeah, that makes, makes sense, yeah. I'm not, I'm not convinced. <laughs> yeah, most of it I got and yep. some of it, yeah. So, so you want to just have an understanding of what you're doing with your body but not be too caught up and focused on your body. You want to have just focus. And we, we're going to release a new um, Under the Lid podcast episode on this, this okay. sort of thing. So yep. I really, you, you should go and listen to that once it's published in the next few days. Um, yeah. And in that, you'll be able to understand it more. But basically, it's just like the best players, like Steve Smith, I had a conversation with recently and he said that like the, when you're the, I asked Josh Philippi a question in our online program, where are you trying to hit yeah. the ball? And Steve wrote, surely the answer to this is wherever the fielder isn't. So yeah. it's not like oh, I'm trying to hit it between cover and mid off and I'm trying to keep my shoulder there. And like, you're just thinking, I'm just look, trying to hit the ball where the fielder isn't. Mm. So you're focusing on sort of hitting the ball into a gap rather than, internally focusing on okay my head's got to be over the ball my shoulder's got to be there and 
And, yeah. and I, like I can teach technique in great detail and I do, but I, I think sometimes we can get too caught up in that. Hey legends, it is quarter past five Thursday morning. I'm about to set off on a run. Just having a little bit of a banana to get some fuel in me. Got Sperry here behind the camera. We're just filming a, a little bit of footage for an exciting project we're coming out with uh, very soon. So that's really cool. Um, he's here nice and early. And yeah, I'm about to set off. I'm, I'm going to try and do a half marathon this morning. Um, I've had half a banana, so I think I can get the Ks in me, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough fuel in me at this time of day, but it's quarter past five in the morning, and we're going to try and get a half marathon done before most people wake up. What do you reckon, legends? Seventeen point five k's. Hour twenty five. Half marathon. Hour forty something. Pretty slow, but I'm pretty happy with myself. It's hurting towards the end. I've had nothing to eat. I've had a tiny bit of banana. Got up, went for a run. You're always dehydrated after you first wake up, so tiny bit of water. And I reckon that really. Made me feel it more. It'll be interesting to see. I'll do another one in a few weeks, maybe. Later in the day when I've fueled myself, I've hydrated, I've eaten. But to get that done, it's 7.15 in the morning now. I set out at 5.30, left here at 5.30. Beautiful running conditions. Really grateful Sperry came on the journey with me, gave me some motivation, obviously documented a bit of it. Yeah, I'm pleased I've done it. I'm now going to refuel, spend some time with the family this morning. Need to eat and drink. So grateful that my watch didn't die. It said low battery with about 5Ks to go and I was thinking, oh, I've been on a run before and it's died and it just it hasn't saved any of the run. So I didn't want to go through this, get my K's up, and it not log it. So, yeah, glad that didn't happen. 7.15, now we can go and win the day, baby. your eyes are level now your shoulders are just at a similar level I want you to try and dip that front shoulder a little bit okay we want to always try and lead into the ball with our left side and our front shoulder and when they're level it makes it harder okay so just try and dip that front shoulder a little and then make sure your top hand is really really strong okay in your setup you don't want to be squeezing with your bottom hand your top hands weak you're obviously a right hand dominant person I'd imagine okay and what that does is it your, your natural swing, what you want to do is you want to go like this and use your right side. And as I get through this analysis, you'll see that that's what's happening. Almost every shot, your right side's trying to do everything, okay? So what we have to try and practice is engaging and strengthening your left side because batting is such an unnatural thing where we're trying to swing the bat through nice and straight like this. And as soon as our bottom hand wants to take over, it wants to take our swing more like a tennis shot or more like a, a golf shot or more like a baseball shot, okay? We want to swing cross batting, okay? And that's what you're doing a lot of time. You're coming across the ball. We really got to try and work on using that left side so we can bring the bat through nice and straight, okay? So for me, this is the main area for you to work on right now is really trying to, and I just think do lots of underarms. Forget about throw downs, forget about side arms or bottom chains. You've got to try and master these basics because if you keep practicing the wrong thing for a long time, it's going to be very hard to get out of that habit. 